Hello, this is a video about using singletons with Swift. So on the screen, I have Apple's documentation about the same. So anyone can access this and it says create a singleton, shared instance, da da da. And then you, when you want to do setup, you do this. It's not a very practical example because this clearly doesn't do anything. So I've created an example with a, a counter. So the way singletons usually work is if you've got URL session and you want to use it, you have a singleton instance, which is shared. So if I want to be consistent, instead of having shared instance here, I can have shared. And then it's consistent with Apple's documentation. So here you've got a counter and the shared instance returns the singleton instance. So wherever you access this counter, it will be the same counter. So if you accessed it from, oh, who knows, a, a view controller, and you add it to the counter, and then you traverse to another view controller, and then add to counter, it would be the same counter. So, count, so view controller A increments the local counter, one, two, three, you go to view controller B, it would still be three, and then you can add to it four, five, six, and so on. And so this is an example in code of how that might be used. But again, it's quite theoretical. So in my code, I might do something, and this is where the complexity is ratcheted up a bit for this video, because this involves dependency injection and using the shared instance. So here I've got a, a simple network manager. So instead of using Alamo Fire, I have my own, and I might want to cache the data. So when I'm caching, it can be cached and that cache can be used from anywhere. So I've cho chosen to use a singleton instance. And to be able to test it, I'm using dependency injection. So here, ordinarily, I'm using my cache manager and a shared instance. So this cache manager refers to something which conforms to the cache manager protocol, which has this shared instance. So what actually happens in the code is we ask the cache manager to fetch data from the cache. Now the internal workings of that, not too important. I've got a separate article on that. However, this means I can have several different implementations of my cache manager, which have a shared, which returns that cache manager. So this is an example of a cache manager, which is using a dictionary. Or I could have a cache manager that uses an NS cache to do the same thing. And as long as it conforms to the protocol, then that's totally okay. And both of those do, and they're singleton instances. So therefore, they can be used within that dependency injection class. And if I remember correctly, in here, I also have a, a mock cache manager, so it enables testing. What does this all mean? I'm using a shared instance, so the cache manager, wherever it's accessed, is the same one and only cache ma manager. It's a singleton instance. This final example is slightly complex because it's using dependency injection. So therefore, I can use a mock cache manager. So then I can inject whatever I want in that dictionary before I start. So then I can check it's working correctly. The truth is, for things like this, shared instances, singletons, are totally fine. And if you want to do clever things with URL session and mock that, you can as well. It's when people are using it, a singleton as a single data source and accessing it from everywhere, this is not usually correct. And that's for, say, um, your shopping basket when you're going through an app. A singleton instance isn't usually the correct place to store that data. But things like this for a cache, hmm, it's, yeah, could well be the correct way of doing it. And this cache manager is one such instance where I believe it's it's yeah it, it's a good way of doing it. 